What's up, YouTube? Capital G here, back with a budget Luna Light deck profile. This one is a little different than the one I posted a couple of weeks ago. People were asking me if I could make a budget deck list, and um, I went ahead and did that. Now, this one is it's going to be oriented on kind of cheesing your opponent a little more than the other deck, and I've actually taken out basically every card that was over six dollars. And obviously, I've had to make some replacements. Now, I do run some rarities that are kind of high rarities but the most of these cards come in like you know lower rarities like common or rare or stuff like that and if you guys are wondering what's happening to the deck profiles they are still going to be coming a lot of them i was just kind of missing like one card so in the coming weeks you guys will probably see battery man you guys will see a couple of weather painters you'll see some dark magician fire kings etc etc there will be of course more 4k deck profile greatness so let's go ahead and jump in and I don't think I'll explain this one as much because I did do a lot of explaining in the last deck profile. So we still run, obviously, three copies of the Luna Light Black Sheet. This is your Playmaker. Uh, this is the card that helps you, you know, uh, make sure that you don't run out of resources. It gets you other monsters back when it's sent to the graveyard as a fusion material, whether that be a Luna Light in your graveyard or a Luna Light that's a face up in your extra deck and it searches for your poly. So you're always pretty much going to run three copies of that. We run three three cards of the heart and soul of the deck the three copies of kaleido chick this is what makes going in the leo dancer and going in the panther dancer a lot more possible and again if your opponent does sound strike this card you can fetch like a uh, you can fetch a poly straight from your graveyard. You can add it back to your hand. That that does work with fusion substitute as well, and it is a cost to activate. So you can send it even if they strike you. You still get to dump that lunar light to the graveyard, and it's a really nice card for going into Bagusta if you are forced to go first. Um, I run two copies of Blue Cat. I had three in the other build, but I want this deck to be a little more like explosive. I, I don't want this deck to rely on um, kind of grind at all this deck needs to be able to kind of luck sack your opponent a lot harder than the uh, the other version this version is basically trying to go yola at all times and this isn't really the card to do that plus we don't run interrupted slumber so there's no alternative ways outside of dark hole of activating the blue cat yourself unless you're running into your opponent's monster we have still three copies of Tiger. This is like your definitive pendulum skill. Has a monster reborn built right into it. And then obviously when this card is destroyed on the field, then it can get one of your Lunar Light monsters back from the graveyard. So it is very similar to Blue Cat. Objectionally, I think it's a little better. Still run three copies of the Lunar Light Wolf. Uh, as I told you guys in the other profile, I don't really like Foolish Burial Goods uh, that much. So I pretty much have to hard draw this card or I have to uh, search it from Lunar Light Perfume. There is no alternative way of getting it when you run foolish burial goods you can dump perfume into the graveyard the problem is i think that that play kind of costs you a lot of advantage and not sure if foolish burial goods is quite budget it's around five dollars i run one copy of crimson fox one copy of white rabbit from the last version and since i want this deck to be a little more cheese <laughs> and a little more derpy i decided to put in purple butterfly I, I told you guys in the other video purple butterfly can be a really good card it's just it's only good when you combine it with panther dancer and leo dancer if you use it with those cards it's incredibly good or if you banish it from the graveyard and you uh special summon a blue cat from your hand to double the fusion monsters attacks but it, it basically needs the fusion monsters to be effective and if you don't have the fusion monsters, this card is actually really mediocre. I run one copy of Gofu. I don't think Gofu is very consistent, but this version of Luna Lights needs all the dirt plays that it can get. So hopefully you will open with this card. If not, you just kind of cross your fingers and you hope that you can banish it with like Pot of Desires or something like that because you don't want to draw this as like your second or third turn, especially if you have like a fusion monster on the field and you, you weren't able to kill your opponent because this card is just going to be sitting there dead in your hand. Worst case scenario, I guess if they kill the fusion monster, you can summon this, but you obviously don't don't want that to happen we do run some hand traps people are gonna hate on me for this i run a beck veiler baby and um okay so maxi is too expensive for us to run <laughs> Basically, every hand trap is too expensive for it to be considered budget. Uh, there is, I believe, a common veiler, and even these ultra rare veilers are basically like they don't—they're not worth anything. So, yeah, I did—I did decide I wanted some budget cards or some budget hand traps. 
affect Veiler is the best card there even though Veiler is not that good because Spiral do have the resort there's at least like one card in every deck that you can still Veiler stuff like um Alistar or Gofu you can Veiler your opponent's Candina like those are all they're like those are actually legit hits so Veiler is actually pretty decent and it's not a hard once per turn hopefully you don't open with multiples and since the like most of Lunar Lights is dark and uh, there are uh, a couple of lights in the Pendulum Scales and the Veilers I decided to throw in the ultimate cheese card BLS yes this is an Asian ice deck. <laughs> the, the, the mindset with BLS is this. If you can put Leo Dancer on the field or Panther Dancer and then you can summon BLS, there should be no way that you don't win that duel. So this is basically supposed to be just another cheese card that gives you 3,000 damage or potentially more if you can attack multiple monsters. So people told me not to run BLS. I was like, bro, it's just, it's, it's like another 3,000 damage. Like, why would I not want that in a deck that is OTK based? We play three copies of uh, Luna Light Perfume. It's every version of Luna Lights is going to run this card because it's a monster reborn and then it turns itself into a rota as well so like run through copies there's no explanation needed there three copies of tenki more searching searches all your double l's except for the luna light uh the oh my god i'm forgetting the card luna light uh wolf so yeah and the 100 damage as i said before can actually be quite important when you combine it with uh panther dancer but outside of that not really important i decided to throw fusion substitute back in this deck because that one card in this deck can actually be relevant that one card can be bls or that one card can be i don't know gofu if you're losing or something like that i want this i want this version to have as many Saki plays as possible. This version doesn't have to be nearly as consistent as the other version, but it needs to be Saki, and that's basically what I'm going for. Uh, obviously, you're going to run polys because this is a fusion deck, so that just makes sense. We run some back row removal. To be honest, I don't think Luna Lights need that much back row removal, but in the upcoming formats, Pendulums are going to be getting a lot stronger post-Extreme Force, so Co uh, Cosmic Cyclone might actually be a lot better. And even, just in general, it is a solid card. Like, you really can't think of that many meta decks that don't run field spells, whether it be ABC or Trickstar or uh, Spiral. It's just a really solid card in general, and um, it can get rid of Solemns and stuff like that, like cards that your opponent puts in the back row. I don't think that there's an archetype out there that wants to have its spelling traps banished not um you know the spiral like uh trap cards not the uh the uh the true draco cards like nobody wants to get their stuff banished so it's a solid card two copies pot of neck nine thank god for the reprints because if you couldn't run this in a budget deck i'm not sure that like i don't think luna lights would quite have the power um but just being able to have this i think it's like a three dollar card is obviously super solid and I decided for some really spicy tech, again, I want this deck to be able to luck sack as hard as possible. I decided to play Mass Change 2, and the mindset with Mass Change or Mass Change 2 is kind of the same as BLS, right? So ideally, if you summon Leo Dancer, who's a 3,500 attacker, she's a Magic Spectre, she can attack twice. If you don't kill your opponent with that, then maybe you can uh, turn your Leo Dancer into a Dark Law, and that's another 2,400, and that puts you over the top. I mean, yeah, Dark Law can kind of be a stun card, but you're not going first with this deck anyway so stunning your opponent with dark law is you know, like that's not going to happen this is basically another cheese card to try and otk your opponent that's pretty much it and there was no other like good cheese card that i could think of that could be used during the battle phase finally we run Dark Hole because it's been printed about 700 times. We do not have enough money for Regeki if, <laughs> if you guys are budget players. <laughs> so we can't run Regeki, but we can run Dark Hole. And again, Dark Hole in this deck is, is it's the same as Regeki because if for the most part, if you blow up your Tiger and you blow up your um, your Blue Cat, they will activate. So they, they'll pay for themselves anyway. So Dark Hole and Regeki are pretty even in this deck. It only matters if you have like a fusion monster on the field. Then for the extra deck, We'll start with the fusions. We'll start high and then work our way down. Obviously, uh, best fusion right there with Leo Dancer. Um, huh, Cat Dancer is next. It should have been should have been Panther Dancer, but hey, whatever. <laughs> two copies of Panther Dancer. You run two of all the Luna Light monsters. And then finally, we have the uh, two copies of uh, Panther Dancer. So Panther Dancer is about a $5 card, but if you can't afford a Panther Dancer, then you can't play Luna Lights. Like, you have to have all three of the fusion monsters. This is... I believe the most expensive card in this deck, which I mean, that's obviously pretty good. And then we have the Starving Venom Dragon and the copy of Dank Law. Dank Law is only like a couple of dollars, so obviously, you only need one. 
cross your fingers, hope that you don't draw multiple mass changes. I guess it doesn't matter because you can just discard one mass change to activate another. For the Xyz, I decided to put Dweller in here. Dweller was not in the other build. We were running the Utopia package and Tornado Dragon. There could be some possibilities of your opponent using like a very, I don't know, maybe you run into like Burning Abyss or stuff like that. Uh, I mean, for the most part, usually you'll go into Leo Dancer and they can't really stop her anyways, but Dweller can still be a pretty good card. Um, number 41, if you're going first, this is the card to go into. We run a Castell, a Tiger King, and I decided to play the Phantom Knight Link, Mo or Link Monster, the Phantom Knight XC, uh, Cursed Sword, or excuse me, uh, Cursed Javelin. So this guy is really good. You can really only make him if you use White Rabbit, but it's still a pretty decent card. It's a really obscure play. Uh, what he does is he targets an opponent's monster. He makes that monster zero attack and he negates that effect. So it's really good with Panther Dancer because it does kind of the same thing as Crimson Fox in that situation. You make your opponent's monster zero, you summon Panther Dancer, and then you ram into that monster twice. And you just, your opponent takes 5,600 damage and that's just a ton. If they have other monsters on the field, you ram uh, Panther Dancer into the other monsters and generally they'll lose. But yeah, it's a really good card to have as a one of. And then finally, the Link Monsters because uh, you. You can make them with uh, you can make them with the perfume. You can make them with Gofu. You can obviously make them with your uh, copies of Tiger, which are Monster Reborns. Only Link monsters you need, unless Lunar Lights get a Link monster in this version, are Proxy Dragon and Deco Talker. Uh, Deco Talker. I would say Akashik is just just better than proxy dragon in, the, in this deck but we don't have enough money for an akashic magician so i decided to settle on proxy dragon <laughs> ideally you really just want to make this card and then go straight into this you don't want to sit on proxy dragon pretty much ever but hopefully you guys enjoyed the deck if you guys did give the video a big thumbs up thank you guys for watching as always subscribe if you have not already if you guys have any other budget options to make this deck better go ahead and leave it in the description below thank you guys for watching